Hi, I'm Tom Freiberg reporting for Waterworld TV here at IFAT in Munich, Germany. Please say I'm joined by Martin Smith from Keller. Martin, good to see you again. Hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. Busy IFAT here. Yeah, welcome to our booth. Thank you very much. So, um, Martin, there's a development on one of your new sensors, which is to do with the USB connectivity. So why don't yeah. you uh, talk us straight through it, please? Yeah. We made a special version of our DCX22 data locker. And the uh, speciality is now that we uh, modified it in a way that it's better suitable for the big projects where customers demand high volumes uh, and better prices. So we reduced the accuracy. It's now 0.25% instead of 0.1%. And we integrated a micro USB connector to it. So more universal access. It's more to, universal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People can use their standard cable, which they also use for charging their phone or uh, for reading out their digital camera. It's the same cable. Yeah, it's a universally accepted yeah. way of uh, exactly. charging a device right now. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, and in Aquatech, at the end of last year, you had a development on the LoRa side. So why don't we uh, move yeah. over and, and take a look at what, what's, how that's progressing as well. Uh, on the LoRa side, um, we made a, a special version of our Arc1 data locker. That's this one. We introduced that last year on the Aquatech. Uh, normally, it's uh, equipped with a 3G modem, but now we can also deliver it with a LoRa interface and LoRa stands for Long Range Low Power. Um, it's a separate network for uh, the Internet of Things. And that's a huge trend we're seeing on IoT connected devices. So basically the data can, can get transmitted to the customer consumer very quickly. Yeah, very quickly, yeah. Um, uh, the most Western European countries have a uh, uh, full country coverage of yeah. the LoRa network. Um, there are several networks. Uh, we use the Things network and we use these kind of gateways. This one is connected to the internet and it can uh, receive signals from LoRa devices up to 10 kilometers away. 10 kilometers? Yeah. Fantastic. And now something that kind of dovetails in quite nicely is the software, yeah. the interface on yeah. receiving that data and presenting it in a way that can be used. So exactly. uh, talk us through what we have here. Yeah. What you see here is our uh, Keller uh, Colibri Cloud. It's our uh, cloud application for accommodating the data. Um, you can select here one or more devices. And uh, in short, what you see here uh, is a detailed graph of the data. Um, you can have calculations on the fly. So if you press it, and you select the parameters. It will collect, uh, calculate the data, and you get a second graph, a second chart, um, which uh, converts the original data to, uh, let's say, another uh, reference. And in terms of accessing this software, it's not just PC-based, it can be on mobile device, no. tablet, no. It's Android, uh, Apple? Yeah, it's a responsive website, so it'll work on every device as long as you have an internet connection and a web browser. So for operators out in the field looking for quick access, this, is, this works perfectly well? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, if you, for example, this is a, a Leo 5 gauge with a LoRa interface also. Okay. If I press this, enter, now it sends the data, and within two seconds later, you will see an update on the chart Regardless of the distance, it's just a matter of seconds to getting that data it's through quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, uh, Martin, always a pleasure catching up with you. Thank you for the, uh, the triple update there. I'm wishing you the best of luck with the continued uh, market push out of that technology. Thank you Thank for your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.